Hello and welcome to the 20th video in the PHP e-commerce series. My name is Curtis and this is Free Skills. Um, we're going to wrap up the products uh, page today and all we need to do is add this delete function here. Now I haven't gone yet and added my products back into the database um, but we're not going to actually delete the product from the database and the reason is is because we want to be able to um, show these products in you know we want to be able to run reports and have these products still in the database um, it's more like archived so you could just as easily name this um, field archived instead of deleted and um, but I'm just gonna leave my database intact how it is and if we change this to one uh, that would mean that this product is deleted or archived and it won't show up you know uh, anywhere in the site uh, as long as we program it that way and um, yeah so let's just let's let's take a look at it really quickly um, it's gonna be pretty straightforward we have um, we have if you look at the bottom of the page here we have a link set up and it's this um, products.php and delete equals and then the product ID so what we can do is just at the top of the page um, pretty much above everything after this include here we can just add a check here and I'm gonna add a comment and uh, delete product alright so here all we have to do is add an if statement now this if statement just needs to say if is set dollar underscore get delete okay if that's set we're going to delete a product alright so what we need to do is get our grab our ID so um, we'll just say ID is equal to and then we'll um, sanitize and we'll do dollar underscore get delete alright once we have that um, we just need to run our database query and what we're going to do is run the query and we'll just do it all in line here and we're just going to say we're not deleting from the database so we're not going to do a traditional delete we're just going to update so what we need to do is say update products and then we're going to just change one thing we're going to say set uh, deleted equal to one and then we can't forget this so we'll have the same problem we did la had last time we got to use our where our condition here and we're going to say where ID is equal to ID okay and what that's going to do is basically set in the database this deleted field to one okay then all we have to do um, is redirect the page so we're going to use header I'm going to say location products dot php alright so let's test this out if I go to the front page here and refresh and then I go ahead and click edit um, you can see that it redirects me to the page and then we don't see anything and then if I look in the database and refresh that um, we can come over here and see that this is indeed deleted if I change this back manually in the database to a zero and go back here and refresh um, it is back and we can see that everything's still here um, we haven't actually lost anything we just updated that field in the database and that's going to be useful because what we're going to do is keep track of these solds and we actually want to be able to run reports if I'm a shop owner I'm going to want to know um, here in the front end we're going to do some uh, a dashboard type thing and, and maybe set up a few reports but I'm going to leave a lot of that up to you guys and because um, just this series is getting long and um, if I have any special requests or something we can do some more but I'm going to show a few things there but I'm not going to do everything um, but I do have a homework project for you we've learned a lot about um, basically crud operations which is create read update and delete um, database fields and it 
it's been really repetitive from the brands to categories to products. Um, it's all pretty much the same thing. Products got a little more in depth just because we had some weird uh, stuff going on with some, you know, JavaScript loading these and also JavaScript taking care of updating things. Um, so it got a little weird on the products page. Um, again, a lot of that was caused from, you know, when I first started the project, I kind of started this string idea, which is storing the quantities and the sizes in all one long string. Uh, probably would do that differently if I were starting over. Um, but since I didn't, um, we've just kind of programmed the, the, the program to work, or the, the software to work with that. Um, but, but I have a homework project for you guys. Um, I think it'd be cool is if you guys created another link or put it wherever you want, uh, maybe even put it under products here, um, and just put archived products. And then when a user clicks that, they can go and see all of their um, products that had been archived. And you don't need to do the edit thing. Just do, uh, just show it. And then maybe over here, instead of these buttons, just put a button um, to restore the um, product. And all that will do is change this deleted back to zero. So it's, I think the, the logic would be super simple. But instead of me showing you every step of the way, I think it'd be cool if you guys um, went ahead and took care of that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that too. So when you watch future videos, I'll have that done. But that's my extra credit homework project. And I think you guys can do that as well. If you get run into problems, you know, I'll, I'll help answer some questions. But it really is straightforward. Um, you're going to update one thing. It's going to, you're not going to get any kind of user information. It's basically going to be similar to this featured products button or, you know, um, whatever. But let's go ahead and look at um, Get Bootstrap dot com and let's look at their glyphicons and see if there's a glyphicon kind of like would be cool for restoring maybe like a, a recycle or just kind of a uh, let's just control F here and let's we'll see if there's a restore nope let's try refresh oh look at that so this would be cool like as an icon instead of the delete things so we could use this you could use this icon, or if you find another icon in here, um, you could do that as well to restore it if it makes more sense to you. I just thought it'd be cool um, to kind of give you guys a little something to do on your own. Just a, it doesn't need to have a form like this or anything like that. Just just a table, just like this, that prints out all the products that um, have had them. Um, deleted so that you can add them back in some way and then they would be back in the products page and they would show back up on the front of the site so uh, that's it for this video a short quick video um, to delete products and I uh, hope to see you guys in the next video and if you've enjoyed the series so far please comment like and subscribe and um, you guys feel free to comment or send me a message if you need help uh, I'll try to my best to help everyone um, just I, the only thing that I ask is that you go ahead and do the video all the way through before asking for help and try to solve the problems yourself because becoming a good programmer is about debugging as well like finding the mistakes and figuring out why your code isn't working um, that's all part of being a programmer um, when you guys go on and, and do this past you know for your own self or just for a job you're not going to have you know me showing every step of the way and you're gonna create bugs and create issues yourselves and um, finding solutions to those is a big skill and I'd say start now you know start trying to debug your own software and and only if you're about to give up then ask for help um, but just try and I think that that would help go a long way it's all about problem-solving debugging um, and just proofreading you're looking through your code and trying to find um, typos and syntax errors um, you know there are things that you can do t to help out with that like one is keeping your code well commented which I haven't done a really good job in this series yet but you know and keeping everything clean and um, indented where it needs to be will help you find things also if you're using a nice text editor you know or um, you know an IDE or something that you can 
you know, highlight, you know, or click next to ending curly braces and find the beginning one. Stuff like that really helps um, go a long way. Uh, one thing I did notice here is while I'm here uh, in the products page, I'm going to get rid of this var dump right there and just get rid of that. We had that in for development purposes, but we don't need that. That just, you actually don't want that. So, anyhow, um, I'll see you guys in the next video. I've had fun up till now. And we're going to start, I think, with user authentication in the next video. And we're not going to go real deep into that, but we're going to touch on a few things and, um, you know, check if a, if an administrator it has permission um, to even be in this back area. And we can check on each page if they have permission to do that, uh, to, to do this specific task. But it's going to be a simple registration thing. It's not going to be you know for front end users it's only going to be for you know back end users so at any rate thank you guys and i hope you have a good day